Do you want to know more about painting and weathering freight cars? Why don't you stick around and watch this segment? Hello everyone, Joe from Central Jersey, Conrail and Inscale. Welcome back to our paint shop series. So last time we were together, we put the spray booth together. Um, this time, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be working on our first uh, project. Um, as you can see over my shoulder here, I have a big long string of the Walther's Thrall 48 foot double stack uh, cars. So mainly today, uh, this is just gonna be the, the first project to get rolling, uh, so it's gonna be fairly simple. We're not gonna get too uh, crazy. Um, the main thing I wanna do is I wanna re-decal these and put, uh, the, change the numbers out because right now they're all the same number. So these cars here, um, what happened was in 2004, uh, I was getting started in Intrac and I started to build up uh, a good number of cars. Um, I was on a very limited budget back then, and so I took advantage of these Thrall um, cars. I was buying them singly. Um, but the model itself, the Thrall 48 footers that Walter put out, was actually designed for the four and five unit drawbar connected sets. So these are really standalone cars, and they're not connected with the drawbar. Also, um, you know, I got the A and the B. C and D cars. Uh, the C and the D cars are, um, they have the brake wheel stands on them. Um, the, and there's some details that aren't really totally prototypical because it's not set up for the four unit set. But you know, at this point, I'm not gonna get too crazy with these details because these cars are really just gonna be used for display running and run through. You know, we're not gonna be switching them out here on the say her secondary. So today what we're planning on doing with these, uh, these cars is uh, I'm gonna be taking off the numbers, uh, the um, factory painted numbers, and then I'm gonna be using micro scale uh, decal sets uh, for uh, changing out all the numbers. So we'll have, uh, we won't have the same number on all of them. Um, the decals that I'm using for micro scale, I believe they've been out of production now for some time. So I picked up some older sets off of eBay. So we're gonna give those a shot. That's when, once we're done with that, um, we're gonna put them in the paint booth and uh, we're gonna give them a uh, weathering, uh, light weathering, and uh, dress up the trucks and the couplers. Okay, so with that being said, give you a little background and tell you what we're gonna be doing. Uh, let me go get set up on a workbench and uh, we'll get working. All right, so this is our first, uh, our first set. Um, there's a couple different ways you can get the decals off. The first, the first way we're gonna, I'm gonna try together and I'll show you is I'm gonna be using uh, micro, micro scales, micro saw. Um, this is actually the, mic, the uh, decal solvent. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little micro brush and I'm gonna rub it over the numbers here and let it sit. The other thing is, um, you know, there's, there's this black bar behind there. I'm not too concerned with that um, if we do ruin that because uh, in the decal set they actually have the black bar so if we accidentally remove that black paint I can always reapply it before we put the numbers back on so we're gonna let that set for a few minutes and we'll try scrubbing it off Okay, so as you can see, uh, we're just taking we're taking the numbers and the black paint off at the same time. So it looks like uh, that is not going to work. We're going to have to we're going to have to just put the black bar over it. What it looks like is when they put the white decal paint on, it caused the black paint underneath to stick to the yellow paint. So. So as you can see, the top one, the numbers are still on there, and on the bottom one, just the whole black thing just came off. So not the uh, not the outcome I was expecting, but we'll we'll uh, we'll work through it. Okay, so another thing we're going to try is 70% isopropyl alcohol. Um, I've had I've had good luck with this in the past. 
So we'll see how this works on these cars. So I'm just going to apply it with a micro brush and we'll let it sit for a few seconds. Start softening everything up. And seeing as how the last one went, I have a feeling that we're going to be pulling off the uh, black block on this too. Okay, so I let the alcohol set up for about a minute or two. We're going to take our brush and we're going to rub and see how we do. And again, we're getting the same effect. We're taking off the numbers and the black paint. So. This one seems to be, the, the rubbing alcohol seems to be taking it off a lot easier than the Microsol. So, not so much rubbing as in the last one. So this car looks like I went a little too far and you can see I actually took off the yellow paint. So got to be careful when you're doing this. You don't want to go do overdo it. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll take these to the sink and we'll wash them up and I'll get started on the next set. So while we're doing this, the uh, last cars, what I did is I took them in and washed them with some uh, hand dish soap, some mild detergent and uh, toothbrush, scrubbed it all up. And then I took them over to the paint booth. That's why I keep hearing the compressor kicking on and off. And uh, blew them off real dry. And they're sitting on the, on the layout drying off right now. So. And it's actually pretty smooth. Even though we just took off the numbers, and we didn't take off the rest of that black there, uh, it's smooth. So I don't. I think that'll be pretty good for uh, decal. So. Okay, so this is our third set. I uh, went, went ahead and take the, the uh, numbers off. Now, um, like I said, I'm running into the issue is that the microtrains set only comes with four, four black squares. So that's only two two cars, and I have. Uh, this one and two more to go. So I'm going to take a break here. I've washed these cars off really good and I'm going to give this a shot. I'm going to take some, this is Model Flex Engine Black and I'm going to touch up this square and see how it looks. And what I've done, I'm just using the straight paint out of the bottle. And I'm just uh, kind of almost dry brushing it, not really getting too much. Okay, so um, I let that paint dry for a good 15 minutes. So uh, as you can see, I think we got a winner here. Um, this uh, Model Flex Engine Black is going to work perfect. Um, so uh, from here on out, I got, like I said, two more sets. We're going to go ahead and do the. Uh, We'll do the black to cover up that. And the first two sets we did, we'll use the decals. So uh, I'm gonna finish these up. And uh, the painted ones, I'll let blah, dry overnight. And the, the two with the decals, we're gonna get started putting the black decals on so we can let them sit overnight. Okay, so I got all the uh, other cars painted black and they're going to sit overnight. Um, in the meantime, what we're going to do is we're going to do these first couple cars that we did um, with the decals so they can dry overnight and we'll see how they come out. So right now I got my uh, tools to do some decal work. I got a nice super sharp hobby knife and I uh, got a couple pairs of tweezers, a bowl of water. Um, I use uh, filtered water out of the uh, the fridge. I don't use uh, regular tap water because you want to avoid doing that so you don't get any kind of mineral deposits. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to use my hobby knife and I'm going to cut out these squares that I need. Really truthfully on this decal sheet I really don't need 
I just need the black squares and the um, the numbers. That's all we're going to be using on this set. So, all right. So I'm going to trim them down and uh, get as close to the black as possible because we're working in a real tight area. I'm just going to trim these down. Cut this little strip off here. There's two. I'm going to take and put them in the water. I'll let them soak. I'm just going to do two at a time. I don't want them falling apart. Okay. Got a nice clean soft brush. Got my micro set, my micro saw. So usually what you want to do is you want to put the micro set on first and that'll help position the decal and then uh, use the micro, then you pat it dry and use the micro saw to really get it stuck down. All right, so I got my first decal. Brush it and see if it breaks loose. Let's see here. Okay. All right, so my first decal is ready to put on. Now we're going to take the micro saw, which is the solvent, and we're going to brush it on there. Let that sit. That'll soften it up and get it to sit nice. There we go. Now we'll do the second one. All right, there we go. That one's in there. That one was a little difficult because it fell off in the water and uh, we had to rescue it. Almost lost it. I'm going to put the uh, solvent on there. Let it sit. So if I zoom in there, you can see there's the first one that's in. And the solvent's already starting to soften the decal. It's starting to it is stick down really good already. It's only been about five minutes. So pretty good. Um, we'll see when it dries, which is better, the paint or the decal. But so far, so good. We'll flip it over and we'll do a decal on this side. But this time, what I'm going to do is I'm only going to put one decal in the water at a time so that it doesn't slide off like it did last time. There, that looks perfect right there. Well, that's, that's it. Okay, so there it is. That's the last one with the decal. Everything's all set. It's going to sit and dry. And uh, we'll move on to the next set when these dry. Okay, so the paint has set up enough that I can put these numbers on for the decals. Um, so... I want to get these numbers on and let them sit overnight so we can get them in the paint booth first thing in the morning. So um, I've already gone ahead and started cutting them. So let's uh, start putting them on. So I'll start with this one here. So I'll put that one right in there. Good. All right, so we'll put a little uh, solvent on it just to soften it up and let it sit. And we'll put it aside. So here's the next one. So I'll go ahead and cut the decal. So the last, one of the last cars I just did 
um, the decal totally ripped and pretty much I couldn't salvage it. So uh, the one, one of the cars isn't going to have a number on it. Um, so apparently these decals are very old. I had, there was a note in this, in it from the seller that says, uh, these decals are older. Please test a part of them before using. Thank you, Debbie. So, so far, other than the, the one series that I just did with the, um, them ripping, uh, pretty much it looks like everything else is fine with them, even though they're older. And I don't know how old they are, but this decal almost floated off in the bowl. I almost lost this one, but I was able to save it. So like I've said, you know, just take your time with these. If you rush or try to force something, you'll rip them and they won't be usable. There's no really set time on these decals. So as long as they're wet, they will pretty much not get stuck. solvent again okay so what that solvent does is it softens the decal and gets it to suck down onto the surface so you don't really see the seams as much all right and this is our last one the uh, the one set of four I'm just leaving it the stock number and this way everything else has changed except for that one perfect okay and so with that we are done with renumbering all these cars so I'm gonna let them set up real good overnight and I'm not gonna to touch them tonight and we'll revisit them tomorrow when the decals have had a good uh, a good set time all right that's enough for tonight okay everyone so it's uh the next morning, uh, the cars have been out on the layout. They've been uh, set and all the decals are dry. The, the paint's real dry. So now it's time for the fun part. We're going to start putting them in the paint booth. So I'm going to get the camera all set up, get the paint booth set up, and uh, we'll get started. Okay, so I'm all set up here ready to, uh, to go in the spray booth. So what I've done is uh, I've taken the wheels out of the trucks, but I've left the trucks on so we can get some overspray on the trucks, but I didn't want to gunk up the wheels. I picked out three colors that we're going to work with. Uh, we're going to try a sand, we're going to try a mud, and we're going to try a rail, rail brown. Um, what you need to realize about the intermodal cars um, when you're starting a weathering process is intermodal cars don't generally sit around very long. Uh, they're not making money for anyone when they're sitting idly in a yard somewhere. So they're constantly on the move. So when you're uh, weathering, keep that in mind so not so much rusting um, not very many streaking or runs but when they do go you know they are getting very dirty uh, and that's generally we just overspray everywhere so everything's going to be evenly coated throughout um, also some of the things you can look at is I have noticed I've been doing a lot of rail fanning and, and looking at a lot of pictures over the last couple of weeks of intermodal cars and uh, there's the tendency on like the 53 footers or the multi-purpose uh, wells um, they'll get a, a 
good coat of grime on them. And what the wor the yard workers will do is they'll just come along with a rag and wipe off the markings for the um, for the container spot. So the, the, the little 48 to 53, they'll just clean those off. So when the loader operators go to set the well, uh, cars, the containers in the wells, they can see the mark. So that's another little thing that you can try. But with these, uh, these are only really marked for 48s. Uh, maybe I might try it on one or two of them. The other thing is, um, you know, if you're modeling, I'm going to say, I'm just going to throw a date out there. If I'm going to say before the, the big crash in 2009, if you're modeling before then, intermodal cars didn't generally get a lot of graffiti, um, you know, because they were constantly on the move. Um, it wasn't until of recently that I've started to notice a lot of graffiti on intermodal cars. I think the taggers have kind of made it almost like it's a, it's a big prize to tag a, an intermodal car because they are in secured locations or they're constantly on the move. So recently I have been notice, noticing a lot of uh, graffiti work. So uh, keep that in mind too. So the one thing I didn't talk about is um, the one of the well cars uh, when I was doing the, the uh, the decals, the decals so totally just broke apart and, and separated. So one of my A cars only has a number on the on one side. So that's okay. Uh, I'm going to uh, just leave it like that for now. And at a later date, I'm going to get some graffiti graphics, and uh, I'll just put a big graffiti mark right over top of the spot where the number is. And it's not not too concerning because don't forget there's a number on the A end and the B end. So that one side of the car, the four unit set, will have a number. It's just that that one end. I couldn't do anything about it. Um, if I wanted to, I could have sat there and pieced it together with individual numbers, but you know, uh, we're just going to move on from here and uh, leave it like that. Like, so the last thing before I get ready to start spraying uh, is is consider the these cars are individuals, uh, you know, because they they're not connected with the drawbars. Um, however, I'm going to spray them in four unit sets because uh, don't forget they're going to be traveling together in a group. So generally, that group is going to have the same type of weathering effects throughout the, the four or the five unit set. So keep that in mind when you're weathering your cars too. If you separate your intermodal uh, Husky stack wells, uh, make sure you put them all in the booth and do the same color at the same time because they're all, they're all gonna have the same general effect. Okay, so I'm gonna set up the airbrush. We're gonna, I'm gonna shoot sand first. I'm gonna put it in my uh, color cup and I'm gonna uh, dilute it down with about three or four drops of uh, um, rubbing alcohol. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna start with our A, rail, our a car. Um, what I recommend you do, I'm gonna, let me just move these out of my way real quick. Um, when you shoot these cars, um, concentrate. I'm going to concentrate more on the frame of the car itself. I'm not going to really concentrate on the containers. Um, you know, the containers do need weathering. Um, I have noticed out there, there's, but the, the containers are generally clean, um, but you know, a little bit of weathering to tone them down. Uh, the other thing you can get into with the intermodal uh, containers is, you know, put in some welding patches or different colored paint patches, you know, because when they're damaged, they're fixed and they normally don't use the same color paint. So uh, something to consider about that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up the brush. I got it set down to about 20 pounds. It's a little bit of sand color. kind of tones down the paint color in here. So this kind of effect with the sand is almost like if you were uh, modeling your cars for winter, you know, with that overspray from the salt and the sand um, as it goes across the railroad, uh, the, the grade crossings. Also it gives this, this sand color gives everything a nice faded look. So I'm um, like, this is going to kind of be real light weathered, this car here. And then um, I'll come in with some pastels and we'll hit all the other spots. I'm going to hit this top of this container and just tone it down a little bit. Okay. So we guess we're going to put this aside and let this set up and we'll work on the next one. Take my D-car. Okay, so I got my next set. I've uh, 
loaded up the brush with uh, some rail brown by uh, model flex and we're gonna go ahead and spray this on here oh yeah look at that I'm already very happy with this this is kind of what I was looking for that real that real dark color look I like it down there in that well get on these walkways yeah that I like that look that's that's really good. little overspray on that bottom container but that's okay all right so uh, put these aside I'm gonna get uh, set up I like this color so much we're gonna shoot another set so uh, that'll make three with this rail rail brown okay so with those last four that I set well uh, we're gonna do a little experiment here I'm gonna take a little micro brush with some uh, alcohol and I'm gonna come in here and clean off these little tick marks here where are the these are the container markings to tell the loaders where to put the uh, where to put the certain containers. So I'm just going to clean off these marks, almost like it was too dirty for the operator. So it cleaned it off. I've noticed that on the on the Trenton line when I'm watching the CSX trains go. It looks like they got someone in Philadelphia who's cleaning off the marks. So you can see I cleaned off the I cleaned off the number and I cleaned off the little. Uh, marks there so they're nice and clear just like that so we'll do the next three cars so with this one we'll take the uh, the number clean the number off so you can see it nice and neat clean off these little tick marks here almost like somebody in the uh, in the yard was wanted to see these marks Here you can see it on this end, you'll see what I'm talking about. There you go. Adds a little character to the car. All right, so now I'm gonna put the wheels back on these. We'll put them up in the layout to dry and I'll get set up to do the last color with the last set and that's gonna be the mud. Okay, so um, we're gonna come in here with some pastels and do a little quick work. See how what we can do here. I got three colors picked out. I got a dark earth. I got a light earth and I got a soot. Okay, I'll put those over there. So, first thing what we're going to do is going to take some earth color, dark earth, because this car was sprayed with light. I'm just going to put it on the bottom here. Kind of tone it down a little because I didn't like the way this color came out. We'll put some up on the running boards. All 
All right, so we'll uh, get in here with some dark earth. All right, so we'll take some uh, some of this dark earth color. I'm just putting it on my mat. Just rub it on there. Just kind of give it a little different colors. Dirty up these walkways. Now what I'm going to do is I will take some soot color, there's a little neat little trick here, and we'll uh, hit these corners here, almost like a tractor trailer that had a diesel exhaust problem was pulling it. I you know, put a little soot marks up there, just dirty up the corners. That's another little effect. Take a little streak it on the top. So looks good. We'll do the same with this one. Don't do the door ends of the containers because that's the back. So we'll hit some uh, diesel exhaust up here. Some trucker wasn't taking care of his truck or something. I don't know. Okay, so this is the last. This is the last one we're gonna do. This is that sand color, and you could see the difference. This is really light. So I'm gonna come in here with some dark contrast and kind of mess this up a little bit. Yeah, it's working on the car. Pretty good. And we'll take this earth color. Tone down the JB Hunt trailer a little bit. Take this Conrail. I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep the Conrail container fairly clean. For obvious reasons. Yeah, well, maybe not. <laughs> but the great thing is, if you get overdo it with these, you can always just grab some uh, Windex and some and a paper towel, and you can scrub it off. So, I'm gonna hit the uh, I'm gonna do the old diesel exhaust effect again. Let's get a lot of. Let me get heavy. Okay. So there you have it. That is the last one we're going to do the pastels on. I'm going to leave the last two sets that are up on the land. I'm just going to leave those the way they are airbrushed. Um, I don't want everything to look the same, you know? I want some variety. So, okay. And that's it. Okay, so there you have it. So we worked on our um, Walters uh, Thrall Intermodal Double Stack Containers. So uh, we um, went through and changed out all the numbers using the microscope decals. You know, we had those um, the little issue with the black coming off when I was removing the numbers, but I think the engine black paint worked just as well um, because the decal sets only gave you four of those blocks. So it was really only enough to do one car and I only had two sets. So I think the engine black paint was a good alternative. It turned out just as good as the decals and I was very happy with the outcome. So then we took the cars into the paint booth and we spray painted them. I think the rail rail brown was the optimal color for the weathering. Uh, I think the sand was a little too light. It kind of just faded it and the uh, the mud really was the same effect. And those powder pastel chalks, um, we used those on four of the sets 
to you know dress them up and and break up the uh the contrast of the paint and add a little more detail to it um i found that website for you so go check it out uh bragdon enterprises they're out of georgetown california um if you like that what that product that i was using go, go over there and buy it i'm not getting anything back from them so you know this is kind of a free plug on there for them so uh, don't think i'm pushing you to go uh, buy it so that's going to put a wrap on this uh, paint shop. Um, so next time uh, we're together for our shop series, we're going to be doing the SD50 uh, sound install and the support the troops logo. Uh, that's what you can expect next. And um, you know, based upon some comments from my ops videos, uh, people were talking about loads. I got a lot of cars with no loads in them. So I'm going to change up the order in the paint shop and uh, i think we were planning on doing the uh conrail reefer next but you know what? i'm going to bump it and we're just going to start working on loads so next shop series uh paint shop series we're going to be working on our h43 hoppers uh i got still got some that i got to weather and change some numbers and we're going to be working on sand loads for those so uh, we'll do that together and uh, otherwise, that's all I have. I hope you guys enjoyed following along. I think it was a good series, uh, a good a good episode this time. Uh, I had fun doing it. And now my uh, intermodal cars after 15 years are finally all weathered and numbered. So I was glad to uh, take you along on that journey. So that's all I have for you this time. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Central Jersey Conrail Linen Scale.